Greetings beatmakers. Today we're going to be talking about chain selector crossfades for drum racks and drum sound design, which is really cool. And also some really nice uh, macro workflows um, to get your beat making sound design really happening. So chain selector crossfades, what are they? In a nutshell, they're a really cool way to crossfade between sounds that are in a rack. That can be in an instrument rack or a drum rack. In that little tune I was just playing you, or you've just seen edited together, playing through, um, it featured some sounds that had crossfades in them. Um, for example, this little piano sound I have here, which is in an instrument rack, you can see on screen here as well. Um, I can play you the sound. It basically has a, a nice soft piano sound, which crossfades to a prepared piano sound, which you'll see when I go across here. So as I turn this little dial here, and you'll see my macro dial updating on the screen there. But on the push here, so I can kind of move between these very plinky plonky, great percussive sort of prepared piano sounds. Um, and we can move back to a nice sort of uh, harmonic melodic piano sound. So um, that was cool in a few ways because I could sort of get a, um, I could find a nice balance in between those two sounds. Um, in order to find a cool sort of little beat that I'd play. I'm a percussionist, so I like um, playing rhythmic sort of things even on melodic instruments. So even though, well, piano is technically a percussion instrument, so. So the prepared piano sounds giving me that extra layer of funkiness. Um, another place where this was happening was actually in the sound effect that you might've heard at the beginning, which is like a wind sound effect. Um, when I hit go here, you can hear that I can uh, crossfade here in this wind sound. You can see down on screen here between, I'll just move my screen across here. You'll see that I'm moving my chain selector crossfader here and it's allowing me to move between different layers of wind sounds, especially if I remove some of this other sound here. So you can see that I'm kind of Moving between layers here. Okay, so how does this apply to beat making? Well, I'm gonna show you right now. I'm gonna create a new empty MIDI track. Command Shift T on Mac, Control Alt T on Windows. I'm gonna open up my browser and I'm gonna grab a drum rack. I'm gonna grab one of my favorite drum racks. I'm gonna drop this one in, Acoustified Kit. So when I drop this in on its own, it's gonna take a little while to load up the samples into RAM. And then I can play it on my push here. The push has recognized it as a drum rack. Fantastic drum kit. I love that snare drum sound. Um, so I want to turn this now though into an instrument rack that I can create a chain selector on. So basically what I'm going to do is I'm going to layer multiple drum racks on top of each other. The quickest way to do this and the way that I like to do it is to basically create a group around the drum rack. Command G, when I select the drum rack, creates a group around it. On Windows, Control G. And you can see now it's created this nice bracket around it. And when I expand this, with the chain view, you can see that it's saying it's an instrument rack now. And I can even show my macros up as well by clicking on this button. And I can now see this individual drum rack as a layer and an empty space, which is telling me, drop an instrument or sample here. And that means that I can drop another drum rack in there or another instrument if I like. But you can see that the push is still recognizing that I have a drum rack in this instrument rack. So I'm gonna grab another drum rack. I'm gonna grab one that I like to use um, here. It's called Luthier Kit. This is a nice um, sample or collection of samples from an acoustic guitar actually. So it layers nicely. I'm gonna drop this in as another layer on the acoustic kit. Now right now, um, I might want to have some individual volume controls on the two kits, so I'm going to do that first. In the instrument rack itself, I come over to this uh, volume slider here, and I'm going to control click on this one, and I'm going to map this to macro one. I'm going to control, kick, control click on the Luthier kit, map this to macro two, and you can see that they've shown up as chain volume, but I'm going to name these. Command R, Mac, control R, Windows. I'm going to first do the uh, kit as the first channel. So I've named that um, something obvious that I can read on the push as well. And I'm gonna select this one here. 
instead of chain volume, I'm going to rename this one Git. Rhymes with kit, and it's my guitar sound. And you can see these are both set, they automatically snap by default to negative infinity or no volume. I'm going to select the dial and hit delete, and that'll take it back to its default value, which is 0 dB. So now I've got a bit of volume control over the two. If I click device on my push, I can now control those two and I've got kit and git showing here, kit and guitar. And so if I pull the kit uh, down a little bit and turn the guitar up a bit, I've got the two sounds. I can turn this all the way down. Here's my guitar sounds. Here's my kit sounds. If I bring them up, turn the guitar down. So I'm going to try and find a nice little balance here. But I'm still finding that I might want to have a little bit of a um, little bit more control of the blend of these, but do it all on one knob. This is where the chain selector comes in. Um, when I select this little button here, which is called chain, I'll click on it. It opens up and expands this little window here, which shows my chain selector. And the chain selector is actually this orange line that moves across the top here. It goes from 0 to 127. And this is something that can be mapped and my push can, tr can control it or another MIDI controller, any MIDI controller can control this. And what I need to do is set some chain selector values here. So I grab these little brackets which are to the side of my racks and I'm going to drag these all the way out and what that means is when my chain selector is at any of these values between 0 and 127, it's going to do something with these kits, these drum racks, the Acoustified kit and the Luthier kit. So now I need to tell it what volume to play these things at. So it works with volume by default. I'm going to grab this little white bar above and you can see as I drag this out, I'm setting now a constant power line here that's going to go from 0 i.e. no volume at all, and then when the chain goes all the way to the right, the chain selector, I get full volume there. I'm going to do the same thing. I'm going to click and drag and do the opposite for the Acoustified kit. So now you can see that when the, the Acoustified kit is at full value, it's going to be zero on the side. And when the um, Luthier kit is at full value, it's going to be at 127 on the chain selector. So now I can control click on this chain selector and I can map that to macro 3. And I'm going to call this actually crossfader. Even though it's a chain selector, in my mind it's a crossfader. And so now when I jump out to my push and I select my instrument rack, I can now see my convenient little crossfader. So now I can use this one dial to move between the sounds until I've got a nice sound that I like. And so this offers a lot of opportunity for discovering new sounds, which is what I love. I love to have a bit of a play. The push is really musical. Um, play some beats that I know, um, or otherwise just have a bit of a noodle. But I'm able to sort of control the sounds here in a way that's going to be um, really quick and intuitive. I'm going to do a couple more things quickly. When I put those together, I reckon they need a bit of compression. So on this group, this instrument rack, I'm just going to chuck a little glue compressor at the end. It's not quite a little glue compressor, it's quite a big, amazing, gigantic glue compressor. A small device with gigantic powers. So I'm going to map this dry wet knob to our macro 4. And I'm going to come over to macro 4 here, rename this one compress. Okay. Compress is now showing up as a percentage on my push. I'm going to choose about 70% compression. And that's going to make everything sound a little bit closer together in terms of dynamic range. So now I can just sort of have a bit of a play with the sounds and see what I can come up with. I might just sort of have a bit of a noodle here and see what we can find while tweaking these. cool. Here's a nice combo rim knock and kind of plucky sound on the guitar from these two sounds together. Just going to mess with that a bit. 
Just moving my crossfader here. Change the sound a bit. Bit of a ride cymbal sound there. So you can see the possibilities are endless. You can, you can slowly or quickly move between sounds um, and come up with really quick results between the two. Um, I've also now got everything in a nice little rack. So I can grab another effect like, a, well, what could I do? Maybe a simple delay. Why don't I grab one of those and create a nice kind of um, delayed beat effect that I could turn on and off as well. Check this out. I'll use a dry wet knob here. I'll map this to macro five. And so I could have some tempo mapped delay. Why don't I go for a two, three, and a little bit more feedback. So now I've got a little dry wet knob here. I'll rename this one, call it delay. So now on my push, when I'm flying through, I can be playing a bit and I've got a delay. And that's tempo dependent. So I'll start, I can even stop my transport here. If I move my tempo around, maybe go for something a bit faster. Bring my tempo up a little. You can hear my delay now is giving me a rhythmic delay. So macros, chain selectors, a really cool way of quickly creating something that you can then get really musical with on the push. Thanks for listening. I'm Josh Hogan from Noisemaker Academy. Happy beat making, and I hope to see you again soon.